Head for the hotel. We'll need to warn Deke. There's a shitstorm coming. Excuse me, Mr. Decourt. This package arrived for you. Cheers. So, were you both in? Getting hold of Weeming first may be the only way we get out of China alive. Uh, look, Glass, I signed on this gig for one reason, right? The money. We'll still get it. But Weeming is our bargaining chip with Mr. Lamb and the Triad for our lives now. That means we find her first, find her fast, and drop anyone who tries to stop us. Well, that's something then. Right. I'm in. I guess we'll need this. A decryption spike? Here. Thanks, love. What'd you find? Only those deemed worthy will be spared. If Wee Ming is not back among us on the 17th at midnight, we will fail, our fortunes will fail, and our sacrifice will be meaningless. The Fungin cannot allow this to happen. Wee Ming must be found. Ah, Wee Ming's at the center of some big plans for Lamb, eh? Ever hear of this group, the Fungins? No, but many Chinese aristocrats belong to shadow societies unknown to outsiders. After Wee Ming ran away, Mr. Lamb found a correspondence that she had with a Madame Shen. <laughs> We mean uh, maybe trying to reach her now, and I believe you know where you can find Madame Chen. Madame Chen? Someone from my past. Is Jin right? Do you know where she is? Up the Haksik River, a town called Shanzi. Madame Chen has a restaurant there. Too right. Now we know why this Jin packer brought this deal to you then, Henny. You got a bleeding inside track. Looks like our odds are getting paid just got better, eh? So believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of disc one. Because the game is made up of FMVs, it takes up a lot of space on the disc, and it's not a super long game, so, uh, yeah. There's a long shower, right? Eh? She has a lot to wash off. Hey, Grace, look. Look! Hana, get up here now. What? What is it? Shanzi? No, it's just a fishing village. What a bleeding mess. You know more than you've told us, Hana. Why is this runaway so important? There. Hey, 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 that's her! I'll be dead. Anna, secure the boat and get dressed. Deke, you're with me. This chase has just become a hunt. Too bloody right. And now we got some new enemy types, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we're not just fighting gunmen. We're now fighting cannibal zombie villagers with giant machetes. Because that's what I expected to find coming here. But uh, <laughs> that, this is the start of disc two, and um, this means all of your inventory, your assault rifles, your double pistols, that have all been swapped out, and uh, now you have an entirely new selection of guns. Your health is regenerated from the beginning again, and uh, once again, we're in a totally do new, different location. And because we're on disc two, uh, we're not going to be seeing so many bumpy FMVs. All my discs are pretty much clean from this point onwards. 
Uh, I got dis- I got Fear Effect from a, a bargain bin, and I believe it was previously played, and I guess whoever played Disc 1 didn't like it, and then sold it, uh, but they also scratched the hell out of Disc 1, but, uh, dual pistols are easy to get, though, because as soon as you come up to the right here, there's already a second pistol for you to find. Uh, the, the walkways you're walking around, it's really hard to get by these guys, so dodge rolling is good for dodging their, their, their machete swings, but you may have to waste a bit of ammo on them just in order to get, run by them. Damn it, man! Hurry! And now we're playing as Deke, and uh, Deke has my favorite selection of guns, the two double-barrel shotguns. That wasn't very neighborly of you there, mate. You have no idea what you are up against. <laughs> How you find this funny, then? How's this for a punchline? Oh. Deke's sawed-off shotguns are incredibly powerful. Whew. Looks like you've had a rough night, hey, mate? Wait! We mean wait! As always, whenever you see a save location, you might want to take advantage of that, because here we're coming up to an area that's very treacherous. Basically, fire is constantly spawning and disappearing on this bridge. And uh, again, this FMV, this, this pre-rendered background, loops over and over again. So you're going to see the same pattern happening over and over and over again, but you're just trying to dodge the fire. And if you get caught in it for too long, if you're like... Uh, maybe three hits, three or four hits by the flames, you'll probably go go up in a blaze of glory, so... <laughs> but, oh my god, I just wanted to find a girl and ransom her off for money, and why the hell are there cannibal villagers with machetes burning things and going crazy? Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, is this really worth the money at this point? Oh boy, I'm getting killed. Go! Well, so much for my escape route. Uh, again, you still have to worry about conserving your ammo, but, uh, you know, when you do get surrounded by, like, three different villagers, uh, maybe you'll want to waste your ammo on them, because you can't dodge all of them, and it's hard to squeeze by all of them, you know? Uh, I would say that the game is pretty decent in giving you opportunities to get new ammo, get new guns. Uh, most of the time, whenever you spawn as a new character or you're put into a situation for the first time, uh, there's always, like, an, a weapon or some kind of ammo that you can find off to the side, you know? Um, so I, I think Fear Effect is actually kind of well-designed in, in that sense. Uh, you, you obviously still have to be careful with your ammo and don't shoot haphazardly. That's why I'm dodging those guys right there. Like, I, I'd rather conserve as much ammo as I can, but sometimes you do need to kill them because they're holding on to items that you need. For example, I killed these people, they just dropped the Pomon Key, which, if you rearrange the words, it's Pokemon. Um, <laughs> but the Pomon Key I need to get to the next area, and, again, an enemy's holding on to it. So sometimes you don't even know if you should kill enemies or if you shouldn't, and you get hung up on stuff. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, so I can understand why some people may find that a little bit annoying, but, um... Either way, just go into the cabin on the left to get that key, and you use the key on this door to go to the next area. Fun. And wet towel is an inventory item. That's, um... interesting. <gasps> oh! You must wash off the blood! It is the blood that drove them mad. The blood that makes them demons. What caused this? Oh, oh not what. Who 
sea. Yesterday, a boy was fishing by himself and fell on the rocks. His leg was cut, and he would have bled to death had he had not been found by a young woman, a stranger. We mean? She was covered in his blood when she brought him back to the village. We were, of course, grateful and gathered to meet her. That is when the madness began. I tried to run for the train. Train? <laughs> yes. A military train comes once a week to secure rations of rice from our granary. It is still there now, but the soldiers are afraid of the demons. They shoot anyone who gets near. All because of this girl, we mean. <laughs> Do you know where I can find her? No, but I know where she belongs. Hell! Yeah, Hannah, I don't think the money's worth it anymore. <laughs> this is kind of fishy. I think this woman might be from hell, so... But, uh, anywho. Uh, as she said, there's a whole bunch of soldiers preventing people from escaping the village, and they will shoot anyone on sight, so we can't exactly reason with them. Uh, so there are soldiers and gunmen that we will have to deal with. Again, if you stealth kill them, the other guys won't hear them, and you won't waste bullets. Uh, so just tread carefully. I mean, sometimes they go in, like, kind of single file. Sometimes they'll have, like, a walking route. Uh, but guys like those, the ones I just killed, they just stand there, and, uh, you always want to have your sneak button ready. Sneaking doesn't really matter too much with the villagers, with the machetes, but, uh, with these guys, gotta be careful. Although I should have went for the left guy. I'm going too far. Oh, boy. Also, it's great that Hannah's only wearing a towel, and yet she has a way to put guns in there, keys in there, <laughs> a knife in there. She's, uh, she's got a lot of hiding places, I must say. Again, I cannot stress enough that the dodge roll is a very, very helpful technique in the game. It helps you so much in dodging gunfire and whatnot, so always take advantage of it if you're in a gunfight. It's over here. Remember how the wet towel is an item? Well, we just had to drop our guns, so uh, let's use it. Hello, Hannah. Not too long, Deke. I've killed men for much less. Yeah, right. Sorry. So, what you got, eh? Military supply train. Probably loaded with weapons. Well, I'd better have a closer look then. At the train, that is. Hey, Hannah. What is it? Chinese superstition. Their offerings, gifts for the dead. When you burn these, whatever they represent is transported to them while they're waiting in hell to be judged. Hmm. I've never seen paper figures used before. You know, that bloke was burning these paper lads before I popped them. I'll check out the locomotive. Meet me there. Right, boss fella. And now we're taking control of Deke again. Uh, again, Deke has the double sawed-off shotguns, and uh, they're incredibly powerful, so you can take down enemies really quickly with him. He has brass knuckles as a melee weapon if you want to sneak up on guys, and... Um, the thing about the sawed-off shotguns is that, obviously, you only get so much ammo with that. Like, you have, like, maybe three shots, and then he has to reload, like, instantly. Uh, so, as you're reloading, it's easy to be exposed and have people shooting at you. Again, everyone can dodge roll. Uh, Hannah, Glass, Deke, they can all dodge roll at their leisure, so you don't have to worry about not having a certain ability that other characters do. I should have used the knuckles on him. <laughs> I just picked up an assault rifle, and here's a pro tip for... I learned this the hard way during my first test playthrough of this game in preparation for this LP. Um, if you save before you pick up the assault rifle, because the save point was right there, I just used the save point. And if you save without picking up the assault rifle, and then you reload your file, uh, you don't have an assault rifle, and the item is no longer spawned on the ground when you reload your save file. And the assault rifle is, a, as I said before in part two, a very, very useful weapon. It shaves uh, health off really quickly, it fires at a very fast rate, stun locking guys from ever giving a shot on you. Uh, it, and again, it just brings people down fast, and uh, it's something I need for a, a group of soldiers that are going to be guarding this train coming up. 
Uh, so definitely get the assault rifle. It will ha it will make things so much easier for Deke here. On the right here, I don't really have a reason to come here. The only thing that's over here is some rifle ammo and some shotgun ammo. But if you take advantage of your stealth kills, you can get that ammo. And, you know, all the ammo's good. But stealthily killing people also kind of helps your health meter anyway. Because, again, the whole thing is about fear. Like, that's the, the premise of your health bar. And if you're stealth killing guys and acting like a badass, your character's going to have this confidence about them so that they get more health and they're not really afraid anymore, and their health increases. I, I think it's a kind of interesting dynamic for a video game, honestly. Um, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> you're encouraged to be a badass and to not be afraid, because if you're not afraid, if you kick ass and control the area, then you can get shit done. You know. Anyway, what's in here? Oh, Jesus! What the hell was he doing back there? <laughs> well, coming up in part four, ladies and gentlemen, we have a boss fight.